We now return to the thrilling conclusion of Gen Z Hospital. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst SNL sketches of all time. Randy, freeze. I think that's the Sasquatch. Yeah, boys, boys, there's plenty of commies for everybody. What is happening? For this list, we're looking at the stupidest, most offensive, and overall least funny sketches ever aired on Saturday Night Live. What SNL sketches do you find unforgivably bad? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Jennifer's Date Steven Seagal is regarded by many, including viewers, cast members, and series creator Lorne Michaels, to be one of, if not the worst host in SNL history. I hope you'll forgive me for being a little bit serious. Not known for comedy, or having a sense of humor about himself, Seagal sleptwalked his way through torturous sketches without an ounce of comic timing. In this sketch, he plays a father sizing up his daughter's date, played by Chris Farley. As soon as Seagal enters, the laughter pretty much dies. What? Does that bother you? N no. No. There's absolutely no attempt made to riff on Seagal and his tough guy persona. All that's left is an excruciatingly uncomfortable sketch that even leaves reliable cast members like Farley and Rob Schneider looking lost. Well, I, uh, I guess I will be waiting here. Number 9. Holes Adam Sandler is one of the biggest success stories to come out of SNL, but he didn't host until 2019, more than two decades after he was fired from the show. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm back at Saturday Night Live after all this time. While Sandler's episode was generally considered a success, there was one pre-taped bit that was so bad, it brought the whole episode down a point or two. But if you look a little closer, you'll realize the clothes are actually just Holes. Holes, a music video parody where Kyle Mooney, Beck Bennett, and Sandler marvel about the hole-centric design of clothing through a power ballad, has one joke, and it's not a funny one. I press my holes and I steam my holes and I take my holes to the cleaners. Yeah, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. We know Sandler can do musical comedy, so the failure of this one stings even more. Number 8. Once Daily Estro Max Programs like SNL have a long history of trying to pass off transphobia as comedy, and they've barely begun to make amends. In this commercial parody aired in 2011, Bill Hader plays someone undergoing gender affirmation with the help of hormone replacement therapy. You deserve to be in the body you want, but most hormone replacement therapies require you to take five estrogen supplements a day. Five! Who has time for that? Other male cast members, including Fred Armisen and Bobby Moynihan, are shown with feminine features and in feminine clothing, clearly mocking the very idea of someone being transgender. I'm becoming the person I want to be, and without the hassle. <laughs> Thanks, Esther Max. Glad blasted the sketch as, quote, destructive and dehumanizing, and demanded NBC apologize. It might have been a different time, but that doesn't mean it was ever okay. That's one's daily Astro Max. <laughs> Number 7. Copy Machine Some SNL sketches function like irritating pop songs. They get stuck in your head, and it's hard to get them out, despite how off-putting they are. Hey, Richard, I'm just making some copies. The Tomster! Tom Man! Tom Tom! How you doing, Richard? In this sketch, Rob Schneider plays an office worker, Richard, who gives ridiculous nicknames to the employees who come by his desk to use the copy machine, including musician Sting. Sting! <laughs> Der Stinglehofer! <laughs> Making copies! The McStingster! Stingatola! Sting! The joke is supposed to be that Schneider's co-workers find him and his nicknames to be incredibly annoying, but that irritation spreads to the viewer pretty easily. It's kind of annoying. Maybe somebody ought to talk to him. This wasn't the Richmeister's only appearance on the show, but once was more than enough. Number 6. Rear Window Mad Men star January Jones has been compared numerous times to the late Grace Kelly. She truly is the embodiment of grace. Oh. oh, stop it, boys. You're embarrassing me. So it made sense to cast her as Kelly in a Rear Window sketch when she hosted in 2009. But even Alfred Hitchcock himself couldn't direct this mess of a premise. An attempt to shoot a scene is continually interrupted by Kelly's flatulence. It won't be in a box that size. <laughs> Cut! 
did I do it again? Despite the best attempts of Jones, Jason Sudeikis, and Bobby Moynihan, the sketch is quickly dead in the water. We're not saying fart jokes can't be funny, but they at least need to be better executed than this. Ultimately, this sketch left a tremendous stink on the episode. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna stretch my legs for a second, you know? Hey, you know, could someone maybe open up the front window as well? Number five, Gen Z Hospital. When billionaire CEO Elon Musk was announced as an SNL host, the dominant question was basically, how bad could it be? You know the vibes. The answer? Mostly mediocre, but not as terrible as people might have anticipated. But there was one sketch that everyone agreed was a total flop. In Gen Z Hospital, Musk plays a doctor informing a group of slang-using teens about the status of an associate who was in a car accident in their vernacular. Yo, if this doctor keeps leaving us on red, he's gonna catch hands on gang. It's a pathetic attempt by the show to try and seem with it, but it just makes them look more out of touch than ever. All right, let's get a pick. Come on, crowd in. <laughs> Number four, Christmas Party. It's very hard to make humiliation funny as this sketch painfully demonstrates. Sorry, this is one of the play. Oh man, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Leslie Jones and Kevin Hart play a couple at a holiday gathering, and she is quickly shown to be a domineering force, determining what and how Hart gets to drink and demanding him to kiss a giant teddy bear. I don't want Crystal to be mad. <laughs> kiss that teddy bear like you mean it. Show them what I have to deal with every night, Gene. You can barely hear any laughter coming from the audience, and the whole thing feels less like a comedy sketch and more like a PSA about the dangers of toxic relationships. The only gift offered by this sketch is the fact that it eventually ends. Number 3. Sasquatch Speaking of humiliation, this digital short is embarrassing on multiple levels. On an overnight camping trip, a group of friends is greeted by the mystical creature known as Bigfoot. Everybody stay absolutely still. I watch a lot of Monkey Manor on Discovery. Apes feel threatened by sudden movements. This quickly devolves into the Sasquatch mistreating camper Mikey Day in a myriad of ways, while host Sterling K. Brown attempts to explain what's going on. Primates do this, I think. It's very common, maybe. He's showing how non-threatening you are. It's hard to imagine anyone finding this funny unless they're amused by the notion of someone being demeaned in the most disgusting ways imaginable. We're not sure what's more implausible, Bigfoot being real or this sketch ever making us laugh. It'll be over before you know it, Broham. Number two, the arguing couple. Somehow, there's a relationship conflict sketch featuring Leslie Jones that's worse than Christmas Party. Jones and host Chris Rock play a married couple sniping at each other and unloading years of emotional baggage on each other before an evening out. Don't embarrass me in front of strangers. Don't embarrass me! in front of strangers. Once again, there's no joke to be found in a premise built on hostility and insults. If this was supposed to be a scene from a Tennessee Williams drama, it might have some potential. Stop telling me what to do, woman. You're not my mother. And you're damn right I'm not. What did that woman do to you? But as a live comedy segment, it's absolutely dreadful, and neither Rock nor Jones is able to give it any support. Stop it! Just stop it! What's wrong with you? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Kami Hunting Season Lauren Michaels stepped away from SNL for a period after the show's fifth season, and NBC brought in associate producer Gene Dumanian to take over, causing everyone in the cast and nearly the entire writing staff to leave in protest. Now, now just hold on! The Michaels-less sixth season is considered one of the worst in SNL history, and this sketch is the absolute bottom. A group of rednecks prepares to go hunting for communists and not even a minute passes before slurs are uttered. My friends in the Ku Klux Klan that was over there, they already shot five commies months ago, right. and they already been tried, and they've been acquitted, and they loaded up their guns again, and I ain't even shot a fun single one of them. boys! Even the most powerful sonar technology would be unable to register any laughs during this disaster, which was inspired by the real-life tragedy of the Greensboro Massacre. Anyone who claims SNL was only worth watching in its early seasons has clearly never seen this. It was an accident, Uncle Lester. Of course it was an accident. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.